My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with a Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. This is episode number 29 of the 120 Days to Jam Chemistry with Flash Isaac. Before now, we looked at air and we looked at water. Jam expects you to know environmental pollution next. So, in this episode, I am using one stone to key a lot of bells. We shall be looking at air pollution, water pollution, environmental chemistry generally, and we shall also look at industrial chemistry, industry and environment. It is a very quick and interesting topic and you have a lot of things to learn in this class. Now, under environmental chemistry, you are expected to know the various industries and their raw materials, the types of chemicals in the industry and the various industrial processes. Now, industrial chemistry is the branch of chemistry that deals with transformation of raw materials into usable products. That is industrial chemistry. And under industrial chemistry, we deal with two main types of chemicals. We have heavy chemicals and fine chemicals, F-I-N-E. Heavy chemicals are those required in large quantity in the industry. And the most important or the most applicable heavy chemical is H2SO4. It is used to make fertilizers and it is used in pickling to reduce, to remove rust from metals. Sodium hydroxide is another heavy chemical and that is used in soap making. Ammonia is another heavy chemical used for fertilizers and explosives. Then for fine chemicals, there are chemicals required in low quantity and purity is of high importance. They need to be very, very pure. Drugs and silver bromides are examples of fine chemicals. Now, in plastic industries, the raw materials are petrochemicals from crude oil. So, industries and their raw materials. In the cement industry, you need limestone. And limestone is calcium carbonate. And by the way, if you can't see the board clearly, please increase your video resolution on YouTube. This video is recorded in 1080p, which is very, very high quality video. Crystal clear. Trust me, YouTube gives you that option. And those of you downloading low quality version, doing that, you will get the best out of the class. But we move. In paper industry, Na2SO4 sodium sulfate is a major raw material. In the glass industry, we need sand, we need limestone, that is calcium carbonate, we need sodium carbonate, and we need sodium tetra also sulfate. These are the raw materials needed in the glass industry. For steel industry, we need iron ore and carbon. For textile industry, we need cellulose from cotton and petrochemicals. In the soap industry, you will see fats and oil and KOH or NOH. Potassium hydroxide is used for making soap. Sodium hydroxide is used for making soap. For liquid soap, generally, you apply potassium hydroxide. For solid soaps, you apply sodium hydroxide. Now, for margarine industry, margarine, we use vegetable oils as raw materials. So all these are transformed into the finished product. You can see there. In the fertilizer industry, we have tetraozophosphate seeds, potash, and ammonia. In the petroleum industry, you see crude oil. Crude oil is raw materials of the petroleum industry. And in the ceramics industry, we have silica, oxides of magnesium, aluminium, zirconium, and chromium. The industrial processes. This is a very interesting topic, and questions come under this process. 
what you basically need to know here is the processes, the products, or what is formed, the result, and the catalyst. So, very process is the industrial process used to make sodium carbonate. Na2CO3 is made in the industry using the Sauvé process. Contact process is the industrial process used to make H2SO4, tetraoxysulfate 6, is made in the industry via contact process. And the catalyst used is vanadium 5 oxide V2O5. Harbor process is the industrial process used to manufacture ammonia. And the catalyst used is finely divided iron. When you see finely divided form of a solid, it means powdered. So powdered form of iron is the catalyst. Astworth process is the industrial process used in making triazonitrate. This should be 3 times 2, uh, 6, minus 1, 5. That is triazonitrate, 5. Hall process. Is the process used for electrolytic extraction of aluminium. So aluminium is extracted via hull process. Bosch process is the industrial process used to make hydrogen. That should be from water gas. Bejos process is the industrial process used to make petrol. And the catalyst used is nickel. Blast process is used to make iron and steel. Bezema process is the industrial process used to manufacture steel. Thermite process is the industrial process we use to weld metal parts together. And the adjacent process is used to manufacture graphite. Ladies and gentlemen, I trust you find these industrial processes interesting. Let's look at pollution and things you should know under environmental chemistry. Here is an overview of environmental chemistry. Now, water pollutants are unwanted substances in water. Therefore, they pollute the water. Refuse and sewage, dumping rush, uh, rubbish inside water, inside sea, we pollute the water. Industrial and agricultural waste, crude oil spillage, crude oil spilling inside the water. Thermal pollution, that is the use of water for cooling process. All these are water pollutants. And air pollutants are all sides of carbon. For example, incomplete combustion creates carbon monoxide, CO, which will affect your breathing. All sides of sulfur and nitrogen are air pollutants because they dissolve in water to form acid rain. Good candidates are sulfur for oxide, Nitrogen 1 oxide and nitrogen 4 oxide. These are oxides of sulfur and nitrogen that are air pollutants. Now, particulate matter are air pollutants. These are solid pollutants. Burning of coal and wood fire. All these, they create air pollution. And chlorofluorocarbon, C, F, C, is an air pollutant. Examples, or an example of Chlorofluorocarbon is freon. Chlorofluorocarbon are man made pollutants, chemicals made by man that cause pollution. In your AC, in your fridge, the refrigerant or the gas that they work on is freon. So these gases, as they burn, they move around, go from the compressor, condenser to evaporation unit, goes back because the AC works on the ability of substances to change. From gaseous state to liquid state and liquid bath to gas. So this freon is a gas that causes air pollution. Now ozone layer depletion is simply the reduction in the layer covering the earth. If you look up, you see layer of atmosphere that protects the earth from ultraviolet rays of the sun. So all this chlorofluorocarbon like freon they reduce this ozone layer, they make it go down, they destroy it gradually. Therefore, ozone layer gets depleted. Before you know, the sun ray coming to the earth gets hotter, hotter, and hotter. So ozone is O3. Greenhouse effect. This is increase 
in the temperature of the earth due to heat absorbing gases. There are some gases that absorb heat, thereby increasing the overall temperature of the earth. These gases are called heat absorbing gases or greenhouse gases. Examples are carbon dioxide. This is the major greenhouse gas, the agar at the top. Then we have the water vapor, CH4, N2O, uh, tetrachloromethane, CCL4, SO3, and more. All these are greenhouse gases. Now, acid rain is when some gases mix with water to form an acid. Acid, according to Arrhenius, is a substance or any substance which, when dissolved in water, produces hydrogen ion, while bases produces hydrogen ion. According to Bronsted and Lowry, acids are proton donor, while bases are proton acceptor. And according to G.N. Lewis, acids are electron pair acceptor, while bases are electron pair donor. Oil spillage, we have solutions to oil spillage. You can pour detergent to cure it, or you use bacteria to digest the oil that are spilled around. This is referred to as bioremediation. Bioremediation. And burning is a solution to oil spillage. However, it is not a good solution because it creates another solution, another pollution. Ladies and gentlemen, industrial and environmental chemistry. This brings us to the end of this class. Let's take a look at about three questions I have here from the Flash Leonard Dam application. The pollutant from petroleum spillage in rivers and lakes can best be dispersed by dash, pouring detergents. Which of the following processes involves neutralization? Lining of the soil involves neutralization because you are trying to reduce the acidity of the soil. And which of the following pollutants is biodegradable? Domestic sewage are biodegradable. Metal scraps, plastic foil, and radioactive waste are not biodegradable. So these are the questions I picked out under environmental chemistry because you may find them somehow difficult to understand. Now that we've answered this, open your flash tenant jump application, begin to play with other questions under the industry and environmental chemistry. The application is compulsory. In fact, so long jump is concerned, the Flash Learner Jump app is the best thing that has happened since sliced bread. You can get it using this YouTube description. Just click on it, the app will install, or you visit flashlearners.com to install it, or on Play Store, search Flash Learner Jump, you will see the application. It is everywhere. Many persons are installing and enjoying. If you have questions regarding installation and activation of the app, chat me up, straight up, we talk and be friends. That's how we ball. See you, asses, basis, source, next episode.